Hello, you might notice that during this video and the different scenes my clothing or appearance will change. This is largely because of my bad back at the moment and I can't always film everything in one go. So I know the continuity is terrible but just have to bear with me until I'm better. Anyway, roll titles! <laughs> I'm Kip Hakes and in today's video we're going to be looking at this intriguing box from Hyperoptic. Now Hyperoptic are my fiber provider and they give me one gigabyte up and one gigabyte down which is phenomenal and actually you might have seen I've done a video recently on the Nokia router they sent me which gives really fast Wi-Fi speeds. Now things have changed slightly because they've actually got a new ZTE router that offers Wi-Fi 6. So newer phones and consoles and things support Wi-Fi 6 and that is theoretically an even faster Wi-Fi protocol. So we should be able to get close to our one gig speeds over Wi-Fi, maybe. Now the thing is what with Wi-Fi it can be affected by so many different variables and things like that. But I'm hoping this new guy gives us some faster speeds. The ZTE router is in here, so let's get it out of the box. Now I have to hide a slight bit of the um, opening of the box because it's got my address on. So there we go, we've got the welcome to hyperfast hyperoptic gump there. And then there we go, we've got the hyperoptic branded ZTE router. So uh, let's take that out of the box and then see what's in the bottom of the box. Okay, so we've got two Cat5e cables, one red and one yellow. Got some instructions and safety information, we'll take care of those. And then we've got a power supply, so it outputs 12 volts at 1.5 amps and 18 watts, so pretty standard power supply guy. Now there's very little online about this router, so you might have found this video by Googling it and coming across it. So thank you for coming to my channel today. My name is Kip Hakes and I do lots of techie weird stuff. So uh, yeah, consider giving a little subscribe or maybe even join the channel and help support it. I'll tell you about the people who've joined my channel in a little bit. So there we go, there's the router and we've got a light for power, broadband internet, 2.4G, 5G, WPS, USB, and phone line one and two. Now I don't have Hyperoptics phone service. There's no real point in having a land, landline these days. So uh, yeah. Now what have we got on the side? Okay, so we've got the WAN. So I guess that's what we could use for our red network cable. And then we've got four gigabit LAN ports and then we've got the USB port, and then we've got two phone lines, the power input, and an on-off switch. And then on the top, we've got some buttons, I assume to turn off the LEDs, or turn them on. We've got a reset button. Ah, the reset button is recessed in there, so you'll need a pin to get at it. We've got a Wi-Fi button, so you can turn on and off the Wi-Fi quickly if you want to and a WPS button. And then on the back, what do we have? So this is the ZTE Home Gateway ZXHNH3600. And as I said, there's not much information out there on this particular router, so it's quite interesting. On the back there, we've got our default wireless LAN name and password, and the default admin username and password and it's interesting they've actually got quite a strong password so it's not just admin admin that you uh, type in to get through so it's good that it's got a secure password by default obviously I will be changing this password so you won't be able to know what my password actually is so yeah it comes with a little stand not wall mountable 
in any way. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. We'll have to figure out how I'm going to put that in my comms cover. But yeah, it's a nice little bit of kit and hopefully it gives us a good Wi-Fi 6 signal. Now what I'm going to do now is get it plugged in and we'll go and look at the settings on my computer and have a little look what the web interface looks like. So let's do that. Okay, so I've plugged the router in directly to this computer so it's not actually connected to the internet at the moment, but we can just have a little look around the web interface and also it means I can configure it to how I want it to be once it's all plugged in and live. So I've just gone to 192.168.1.1 on my web browser and it's brought up the admin interface login screen. So let's log in with the username and password. And then we can just have a little look around here and see how it's all set up. So this does look like the original ZTE router that I had. Very similar sort of setup. So um, let's have a little look. We'll go through the tabs at the top here, I guess. So we can look at topology. There you go. So it's showing all the things that are connected via the wireless and the LAN ports at the moment. And then let's have a look at the internet. Well, obviously at the moment, this isn't going to be really working because it's not connected to the internet but we've got a status tab, we've got security tab, we've got parental controls, and we've got uh, DDNS settings, pretty standard stuff. Okay, so let's look at the local network tab. Okay, so yeah, it's got sort of all the settings. So you can have multiple wireless networks set up, it's completely up to you. So it's got four 2.4 gigahertz slots and it's got for five gigahertz slots as well, so that's really cool. Okay, so yeah, we can have a look at our wireless LAN settings. So we've got wireless LAN basic, wireless LAN advanced, and WLAN radar. Okay, so it's uh, looking at all the different channels and things that are used in our area. That's quite interesting. Right, so let's have a look at the LAN settings. Okay, so we're gonna be changing some settings in here in a moment, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So we've got an FTP tab, we've got a UPnP tab, we'll turn that on, and then we've got a DMS tab, something to do with media servers, I don't really understand. And then you can change the name, so you can just type Hyperhub into the web browser, and that will take you to this. And then we've got the VoIP tab, but as I say, we don't use the VoIP service. And then you've got management and diagnostic. Diagnostics? Diagnostics. And so this just gives the device information. So this is where we can change the admin password. I'm going to do that in a second. Got the idle timeout. I think that's how long it takes before it kicks you out of the admin interface. And then we've got system management where you can just reboot or reset it to factory defaults. So let's change the admin password while I'm at it. Nice new shiny admin password, excellent. Oh, we didn't actually look at the home screen. Pretty straightforward, it just gives you an overall listing of things that are connected through the different ports or wirelessly. Okay, so we need to do some sorting out. Now, first of all, I want to change the address that the router is on because I like stuff to be on 192.168.0.1, um, but it's not on that at the moment. So we're gonna to need to change the LAN IP address of this. So I'm going to change that to zero. Um, it doesn't need a secondary IP address. Okay, so to start them at 050-254. Right, so the that can just change to that. And then we'll click, click apply. Now, because we're changing the address that the router's on, once we click apply, we're not going to be in the router's configuration anymore because we've just changed where it's located. So we'll just give it a moment and it'll probably time out, which is as we expect. Okay, so yep, server's not available now because we've just changed it. So if we go to 0 0.1, it should ask us to log in again. There we go. 
So let's log in with the new admin password. Perfect. Right, so we need to get our wireless networks sorted so we can change the configuration. What is airtime fairness? No idea what that means. Okay, so it's going to automatically pick the best channel for us um, on both the 2.4G and the 5G. So um, let's change these details. We are the bears with stairs. And we've got to change the details on the 5G version. It's okay to call them both the same name. Apply that. I think it's an all right password. Okay, perfect, excellent. And you know what, I'm gonna add a secondary 5G network, just cause I can. Good Kip Hakes. And the password will be, please subscribe. So if you come around my house, you can use that one. Done, right, excellent. Excellent day. Right, okay, so I think that's enough of looking around here. It all seems to be working okay. Let's, um, let's go plug it in downstairs and see if it works okay, actually. I'm gonna put the firework in the, firework? The firewall in the middle. Didn't even look at these tabs. So we're in the internet, then security. And then we've got these tabs, we've got firewall. We did look at that, yep. Yeah, but we've got the fi filter criteria, uh, port forwarding. I'm gonna have to set that up for my, my home assistant. Okay, cool, right. Oh look, and there's parental controls there as well. It's quite cool. Uh, okay, so you can set different Mac addresses to different times where you can ban internet access that's pretty cool. Or just allow certain websites to be looked at. Don't need that for my children, but if you need that for yours, it's there. It's there. Right, okay. Let's log out and uh, get that plugged in. Okay, so um, I'm using my phone now to record the video and audio, so if it sounds a bit different, that's why. So we'll have a little look at the speed I'm getting with the Nokia router that I've got at the moment and see if the ZTE is indeed faster. In theory, it should be. I've got a Wi-Fi 6 enabled phone and a Wi-Fi 6 enabled router. So, you know, that should make it faster, but I just don't know. So let's do this speed test with the Nokia router. Let's go. Just have another go. There we go, download is well over. Wow, it's going up to 600, that is awesome. Yeah, okay, so an average of 584, and that upload, that's well over 500 as well. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, I'm not unhappy with that at all. For Wi-Fi, that's, that's awesome. So uh, let's try it now with the ZTE router and see how it differs. Okay, so the ZTE router is plugged in. Let's do that speed test again and see if there is any difference. I mean, I hope there is. Let's get ready and go. Okay, so it's connecting. Right, okay, ping of 13. Download, wow, that's straight up. That's going into the 600s. Yep, steady in the 600s there. That's really, really good. Loving that. Excellent. So 677 is our download. And the upload creeping up. Yeah, that's into the 500s comfortably. There we go. So that is amazing, really. So if we remind ourselves, the Nokia got 584 down. And this has got 677. So we've got around 100 megabits per second faster 
with the Wi-Fi 6 router by ZTE. And then if we look at the upload score, not as great a difference in there. We've gained about 50 meg, well, bang on 50 meg actually. So that's good, that's fine by me. I'm happy with that. That is plenty fast enough. So there is a definite improvement there with the ZTE. Okay, right, let's go back up to the desk and we'll finish up. Well, there you go. It seems like the ZTE router has really improved the Wi-Fi speeds. I mean, they were pretty awesome to begin with and they're now even better. I'm so impressed with it. And also, I love the fact that HyperOptic will just send you new routers if you just ask. It's, it's really kind of them and it just means that their customers get the best possible service from their service. So yeah, massive love to HyperOptic for sending that out to me. I really do appreciate it. And if you're a HyperOptic customer on one of their higher tiers, then I definitely recommend asking them for that router. It is very nice indeed. Now, talking about higher tiers, I want to give a massive shout out to all of those of you who have joined the channel. It really does help this channel grow and pay for all this nonsense that I create. And uh, yeah, I'm also heading towards 10,000 subscribers, which is mental. So thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed and joined and just help this channel get bigger and bigger and bigger. And hopefully we can do more and more interesting stuff. But I have to give a special mention to all the members that have joined. If you want to get a shout out like this, then please do hit that join button and you can join from just 99p a month. So let's give a bit of love to Becky. Thank you so much, Becky. Bella Webster as well. God bless you, Richard R. Blaster. He's on the list. So is No Name and Matt Lovies. Big up yourself, JRC. And then we've got For The Burbs, Jim Hook, Roberta Gurutham, Roberta Gur I love you, Roberta. Thank you so much. Then we've got the amazing Stez Sticks Fix. Go and check him out. He's a great YouTuber. Then we've got Dean Ball, Ellis the DJ. Thank you so much for your continued support, Ellis. I really do appreciate it. Then we've got Thor Z and Anders from the My Mate Vince Fan Club. I said it correctly. And Robert A as well. You are a star. And coming up the rear, not like that, is David Elphick. Thank you so much for your continued support, David. I really do appreciate it. And you look amazing in the hoodies. Talking of hoodies, then uh, go check out my new merch stop with uh, Puddled. The link is there and you'll see some of the new merch. It's not all there yet, but it will be. So please buy some merch to check out the channel. But before I finish up, we have to give a massive shout out to Tim Salt, who is our newest member. Thank you so much for joining Tim. And thank you for always commenting on the videos. It is very much appreciated. So I think that is it from me. I've really enjoyed setting up this ZTE router. It's nice and simple to do. And if you want to make any changes, then hopefully this video has helped you in some way. But I think that's all from me. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, it's game over.